In this lesson, we're going to be going over 13.3, right isosceles and equilateral triangles. Our objective is to understand and apply the properties of right isosceles and equilateral triangles. For our first example, we're going to show that the sum of the measures of the two acute angles in a right triangle is equal to 90 degrees. Something that's important to remember is that when you add up all the angles in a triangle, it's going to total up to 100 degrees. Because we know that triangle ABC is a right triangle, and we can tell from our triangle that angle B is a right angle, we know that angle B is equal to 90 degrees. And so when I use that notation, the M stands for the measure, and then this is the angle symbol, and then B for the angle. So the measure of angle B is equal to 90 degrees. We know, because the total of the angles in a triangle is equal to 180 degrees, we know that the measure of angle A plus the measure of angle B plus the measure of angle C is equal to 180 degrees. Then we can go ahead and substitute 90 degrees for our measure of angle B. So now we have the measure of angle A plus 90 degrees plus the measure of angle C is equal to 180 degrees. If we subtract 90 degrees from both sides of our equal sign, then the measure of angle A plus the measure of angle C is equal to 90 degrees, which shows that the sum of the measures of the two acute angles in a right triangle is equal to 90 degrees. In this example, we're going to find unknown angle measures in a right triangle. So in triangle ABC, angle A is a right angle, and the measure of angle B is equal to 60 degrees. And we need to figure out what the measure of angle C is. Now remember, the total degrees of a triangle is 180 degrees. And we just figured out that the sum of the two acute angles in a right triangle add up to 90 degrees. So that means that we're looking at the measure of angle C and the measure of angle B as the two acute angles in the right triangle. So to figure out what the measure of angle C is, we have to subtract the measure of angle B from 90 degrees. is 90 degrees minus the measure of angle B equals the measure of angle C. So we go ahead and plug in our 60 degrees. We figure out that the measure of angle C is equal to 30 degrees. We're going to look at one more example just like the last example. Remember that the two acute angles in a right triangle are going to total up to 90 degrees. We know that triangle LNM is a right triangle because angle L is a right angle. So that means that the measure of angle M plus the measure of angle N equals 90 degrees. So to figure out the measure of angle M, we're going to take our 90 degrees and we're going to subtract... 73 degrees which equals 17 degrees. So the measure of angle M is equal to 17 degrees. 
Next, we're going to show that in an isosceles triangle, the measures of the angles opposite the equal sides are equal. If you remember from yesterday when we learned about isosceles triangles, we said that two of the sides have an equal length. And so now what we're going to do is show that the angles that are opposite the equal sides are equal. So we know that in triangle ABC, that AC and AB have equal side lengths. So that means what we're going to prove is that the measure of angle C and the measure of angle B have an equal angle measure. So imagine that you have triangle ABC cut out and feel free to draw yourself an isosceles triangle and try this as well. Go ahead and imagine folding your triangle along its line of symmetry, which means right through the middle of the triangle. If you were to fold it, when you fold it, you would see that angle C lines up exactly with angle B, which shows that they have an equal angle measurement. So in an isosceles triangle, the measures of the angles opposite the equal sides are equal as well. Now that we understand the properties of an isosceles triangle, we're going to figure out how to find unknown angle measures in an isosceles triangle. So we're going to take a look at triangle ABC. We know that AC is equal to BC, which then tells us with what we just learned that the measure of angle B and the measure of angle A must also be equal because those are the angles that are opposite the side lengths. Because we know that the measure of angle B is equal to 62 degrees, we know that the measure of angle B is equal to the measure of angle A, which means that the measure of angle A also must equal 62 degrees. We're left to figure out what the measure of angle C is equal to. Now remember, the measure of all three angles in a triangle add up to 180 degrees. So we can add up 62 plus 62 and then subtract that sum from 180 degrees. So when we add 62 plus 62, we get 124. And then we're going to take 180 degrees and subtract 124 degrees to figure out what the measure of angle C is equal to. So the measure of angle C is equal to 56 degrees. Let's take a look at another example of an isosceles triangle. So in triangle DEF, we know that DF is equal to DE, and the measure of angle D is equal to 78 degrees. We need to find the measures of angle E and angle F. Now remember that the angles opposite the equal side lengths in an isosceles triangle are equal, which means that the measure of angle F and the measure of angle E are equal. To figure out what the missing angle measure is, we can take 180 degrees and subtract the 78 degree measurement of angle D that we know. When we subtract 78, we get 102 degrees. So that means that the sum of angle E plus this angle F is equal to 102 degrees. Because the two angles have the same measurement, we can take the 102 degrees and divide that by 2. 102 divided by 2 is equal to 51 degrees, which means that the measure of angle F 
is equal to 51 degrees, and the measure of angle E is equal to 51 degrees. For our last example, we're going to show that the measures of all the angles of an equilateral triangle are equal and that each angle measures 60 degrees. Now we can think of an equilateral triangle as an isosceles triangle and use those properties to help us in our proof. So in triangle XYZ, we know that side length XZ equals the side length of XY. We know that the length of ZY equals the length of ZX and the length of YX equals the length of YZ. So if I use a different color to help us visualize this, for XZ and XY, I'm going to use red. So XZ equals XY, which means that the measure of angle Z equals the measure of angle Y. Next, I'll change to blue for ZY and ZX. So we have ZY and ZX, which tells us that the measure of angle X and the measure of angle Y are equal to each other for that isosceles triangle. And then the, for YX and YZ, I'll use green. So we have YX and YZ which tells us that the measure of angle Z and the measure of angle X are equal to each other. So we can figure out then, based on that, that the measure of angle X is equal to the measure of angle Y, which is equal to the measure of angle Z. So the conclusion that we can come to for equilateral triangles is that all three sides have the same length, and all three angles are equal to the same length. Let's finish by figuring out what each angle in an equilateral triangle is equal to. Because all three angles measure up to 180 degrees, and we know that all three angles are equal, we can take 180 degrees and divide it by 3, and we get 60 degrees. So in an equilateral triangle, all three angles are always going to be equal to 60 degrees.